What is up everyone and welcome to the beginning of the end for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl as in this episode we're going to be taking on the Elite Four rematches in their final forms here at the Pokemon League. So this is unlocked once you've defeated or captured Heatran at Stark Mountain. The Elite Four and Champion will power up one last time and reach all the way up to the mid-level 80s in what could possibly be the hardest Pokemon League of any Pokemon game. At least in terms of levels, I'm not sure if there's one that's really gotten any higher. But you guys have warned me that this is not gonna be easy, so I've been busy training up my Pokemon, starting with Washington, the Rotom Wash form here. This team overall though is a mixture of new Pokemon as well as some of the OGs like Yukina here, the Frostlass, who's got the choice specs and Benedict the Togekiss with the expert belt maybe not the best item it, like it's not really used in competitive but another newcomer to the squad is Kenny the Blaziken who I think actually now has the speed boost ability I grinded up for an ability patch and switch that up and then Gojira the Tyranitar with the Sandstorm Stealth Rocks I think that'll also come in really handy against the rematches here and last but not least we've got our starter Bonsai the Torterra with that leftovers holding the team down so if you guys are excited make sure to smash that like button and let's get into it the final challenge of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Elite Four rematches round three technically because there is a second round once you've beaten the pokemon league for the first time you can get back in here rematch them but they'll be like in the mid level 60s to 70s after you've beaten heatran like i said they'll be fully powered up around level 80 something let's find out by talking to Aaron. i had a hunch you'd be back for more battles i guess you could say a little bug told me and i can just tell by looking that your pokemon are more beautiful and polished than before of course, so are mine. So now let me show you the evolutionary power of bug Pokemon. Yeah, he still uses bugs, which means that uh, he might not exactly be the toughest trainer around. You shouldn't underestimate bug Pokemon though. They can be pretty devastating in their own right. And Aaron here is going to try to prove it by kicking things off with his Yan Mega. To be honest, I don't remember what Pokemon he had before. Like if he started with Yan Mega, even in our first battle against him. But what I do know is I'm always going to kick things off with my own Rotom because it's got that Volt Switch. So we can get the heck on out of there if it's a Pokemon that we don't necessarily want to battle. I mean, Yan Mega was thankfully one that we're super effective against. So we can just knock that out and already gain a level on Benny. Level 83, the highest on the team. You can see some of my Pokemon aren't necessarily as high as the others, like, I just, I got bored, dude, honestly, training in this game. I mean, it's not bad, but it's also just takes a lot of time, uh, because there's not really a trainer that gives that much experience. I mean, the best way to gain experience is probably the Elite Four themselves, but uh, because I already beat Heatran, I didn't want to do the round three. Like, I'm going into this blind, actually which is a big change from the previous gym leader rematches I did. I had uh, the like page loaded up with all their moves and abilities and stuff. And some people were saying they didn't like that. So I figured for this final challenge, I'm not going to spoil myself or like know exactly what they're going to do. We're going into it pretty much blind, sort of. I mean, I still know Pokemon pretty well. So obviously I know my type advantages and that's all that we should really need in order to take these guys down as Vespikin already down and out. The Queen not fit to rule today as Benny just destroys it. And I'm pretty sure we're going to destroy this next Pokemon too. I just realized the levels are not as crazy high as I was expecting. I mean, I think I read from you guys in the comments that I should be like around level 80 for my own Pokemon. Some of them are obviously a little bit higher than that because I had the whole squad when I was training up. So because of the EXP share, they were all gaining experience. And so, yeah, I mean, Flygon here at 75. Not even a bug type, bro. What is this? Blasphemy. Everybody wants Flygon to be a bug and dragon, right? Are they trying to hint at that or like rub salt in the wound? Come on, dude. That's a Hisuian form, I really hope we get in uh, Legends Arceus, like, Flygon deserves to be a bug and dragon. I think everybody can agree on that, and I think we were most expecting it to be a Mega Evolution, but okay, finally we've got a bit of a challenger 
in our midst. With the bullet punch there from Scizor, I think that's the first time that Aaron's actually managed to land a hit. So, yeah, we're going to swap on out of there. Expecting another bullet punch. I'm going to bring out Kenny, who can definitely tank that up. And then we'll just hit it with a swift flare blitz. We'll see if we're actually faster, though, too. I mean, obviously, bullet punch is priority move, so always going to go first. But uh, with the jolly nature and the berry weakening the power of fire, but I'm pretty sure we're still just going to absolutely destroy it. <laughs> Especially because it wasn't at full health. And we have the life orb on Blaziken, which also powers up our attacks a little bit, but we take some extra damage from the recoil and the life orb. So uh, Kenny, you know, took a little bit of a beating, but now there's that speed boost kicking in. We're going to be even faster as if we weren't already quick enough. Not yet. We'll keep struggling till the very end. <laughs> struggling like the actual Pokemon moves struggle. That doesn't seem like a good idea, brother. But I'm not sure what to do against this Drapion. We could just go straight for the Flare Blitz again. Close combat is going to be neutral because this thing is half dark type. In fact, this is another Pokemon that's not even a bug at all. Like Aaron's team, I like it because they are Pokemon that at least look like bugs, but aren't technically bugs. And you know what? I'm just going to risk the close combat. Even if we don't one shot it, I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Kenny will die probably. And uh, yeah, uh, actually I... Because their levels aren't as high as I was expecting, we could have probably tried to do this without losing a single Pokemon, but it's too late now. I went for the close combat instead of switching out, and so we're done for. I probably could have done this without losing a single Pokemon, at least this first Elite Four. A bug Pokemon's life force is nothing to sneer at. So first you're talking about struggling now? Like, what are you on about, bro? I'm so confused, and oh! Okay, he's actually going to go for the Forest Ore. It's not over yet. I was going to say about Struggle, though. It's not just the actual Pokemon move called Struggle, but there's also one called Struggle Bug. I'm not sure if maybe that's what he's referring to, but because of Volt Switch, we're going to get the heck on out of there. And I guess bring back Yukina, our fastest Pokemon, so pretty sure nothing will outspeed us. And with an Ice Beam, should be able to finish it off since we've got the Choice Specs. And that, I believe, doubles our special attack, so... Yeah, Drapion is down, and out goes Mr. Bugs. Uh, I was gonna call him Bugsy. He kind of does remind me of Bugsy, though. The Bug Elite Four, or sorry, Gym Leader from Johto. I lost completely, but I think you've come to realize how great Bug Pokemon can be. That'd be really interesting if one of the Gym Leaders from a previous generation came back as an Elite Four. I think that did happen. From Gen 1 to Gen 2, Koga became an Elite Four. This brings me back to when I first discovered bug Pokemon. I couldn't believe how sharply they polished their survival skills. Ever since then, I've devoted myself to following the beauty of the bug type. But as much as it bugs me to lose to this, like you, I'll never stop aiming for perfection. That way I can keep on showing the wonder of bug Pokemon to the world. And this is why you'll never be champ. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Kenny there and took some damage on Benny, but uh, we should be okay. I've got plenty of items in here. Let's just go for the max potion. Why not? Look at how much HP we've got on these Pokemon now. 308 and 310 on Bonsai. Like, kind of crazy, dude. On to the next challenger we go. I'm probably going to keep Rotom up first for all of these because, like I said, it's got the Volt Switch and the Choice Scar, so we can quickly get out of there if it's not looking good. Uh, Bertha... You know, is a ground type trainer, so maybe not the smartest idea, but we do have Hydro Pump anyway, so if it isn't orange, you sure look different from last time we met. Why, now you hold yourself like an adult. You remind me of when I was young. <laughs> but I know you're not here to hear an old lady's ramblings. Let's get the battle do the talking. That's okay, Grandma. I'm here if you just need someone to listen. I love Bertha, dude. She just reminds me of a nice, kind grandma. Like, she'd probably have some cookies laid out on a little table for all her challengers, like, just for making it there. She's like, have one of my delicious cookies, young one. No, oh, this is not good. She actually starts off with a Whiskash, which is water and ground type. So even our Hydro Pump isn't really going to be the best option here. But Rotom does have Levitate, and so it can't really hit us with an Earthquake. And I don't know if it has anything else that would really be super effective. 
Yeah, there's the he Zen head butt. Not gonna do too much to Rotom, just tanks it up thanks to that defense uh, that I invested my EVs into. But we also can't really do too much damage to Whizcash, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to Bonsai and pray that this dude doesn't have an Ice Beam or something. That would be unfortunate, but I don't really have any other Pokemon that can... Oh, okay, going for the Skull. As long as we don't get burned, we should be okay, and we do not. Plus, I've got the leftovers, so I can get that little bit of HP back. Now, the question is, will we be faster than the Whiskash? I highly doubt it, but you never know. So, let's uh, wood hammer, and somehow, we actually are faster than it. It's judgment time. I always love saying that, because, like, the big hammer that comes down it reminds me of... I forget the name of the little hammer that judges use. Man, it's like at the tip of my tongue. I know what it is, but I can't quite think of it. So, whatever. That's the reference I'm trying to make. And next up for Bertha, we're going to have a Nido King. Not the best, or actually, we're okay, because we have Earthquake. And Nido King is a uh, Ice Beam user, apparently. So, that's another Pokemon dead. Yeah! <laughs> so much for not letting anyone die during this. Um, I could go for Yukina, or I could go for... Wait, didn't I have someone with... Oh, it literally is Yukina. So I was about to say, I have someone with Psychic, but obviously Ice Beam would be better here anyway, since Nido King is a Poison and Ground type, so Ice Beam will be super effective, and the Earthquake would have been super effective too. But yeah, with Choice Specs, like, we just do way too much damage. Even though Yukina got a critical hit there, actually. That might be why we one-shot. I, I don't know if we would have one-shot it otherwise, because I was about to say, Yukina doesn't have the craziest special attack. It actually has about equal special and physical attack, at least in its base stats. I did EV train it in special attack, but it still, I'm pretty sure, has like less than our Togekiss, so... I don't know, I thought Frostlass... Like, design-wise, it looks like it would definitely be a special attacker, but in terms of its actual stats, it's not too crazy, but with the choice specs, doubling that special attack or boosting it, I don't really know by how much. Uh, the point is that, yeah, it definitely makes it a lot stronger than it normally is. As you'll see here against Gliscor, four times super effective Ice Beam coming your way, sir! And it don't even have the berry to weaken it. I feel bad for it at this point. Doesn't even have a Focus Sash either. Thought maybe that's what Bertha was thinking, because yeah, Gliscor's worst nightmare is just uh, snowflakes or any type of ice, basically. What I'm trying to say is like even a snowflake would probably kill it. Uh, Mamoswine, on the other hand, maybe not so easy to take down. In fact, I might just go for... Uh, never mind, I forgot, we have the choice back. So yeah, we're gonna have to switch the heck on out of here over to Benny. I'm expecting probably an Earthquake coming, so we can dodge out on that thanks to our flying type. But Mamoswine I am a little bit scared of, because I know that it's got Ice Shard as well. And with the Sandstorm going, already gonna tick a little bit of health off Benny. That's not great. Uh, we do have the super effective Aura Sphere, but yep, there it is. Always gonna go first because Ice Shard is a priority move. So no matter how quick your Pokemon is, they're always going to get outsped, but it don't even matter because Benny just tanks it up thanks to its super high HP. And that's why I was saying having bulkier Pokemon is definitely the way to go when it comes to this Elite Four. Uh, specifically the rematches, like you could go for Pokemon that are all super fast, but if the enemy somehow survives, you're just dead. So did I just read Bertha said something about cake? Rhyperior is going to be her final Pokemon, and once again, I'm kind of terrified because this is, of course, rock and ground. Rock, not exactly uh, the best for Benedict, but I know that we're faster, so we can at least get off in Horus here. Not do nearly enough damage. Oh god, the Rock Wrecker's coming, isn't it? Yes, sir! We dodge out on it, though. you love to see it, but uh, we're still not in a great position here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to not... Gojira. I could go for Washington. Has a pretty good defense. Maybe we can tank a Rock Wrecker. I mean, I should have just probably let Benedict faint and then switched over, but 
I think we'll be okay. Rock Wrecker has a very, very high power, but Washington can tank it. I believe... Uh... Never mind. I severely underestimated that. Okay, well, the good news is Rock Wrecker has a recharge turn afterwards, like Hyper Beam, so uh, Rhyperior is basically a sitting duck or a standing whatever this thing is. What, what is Rhyperior supposed to be? Like a mole or something? I don't really know. I guess Rhydon is sort of like a rhinoceros, I think? I've never really thought about what kind of animal Rhydon would be based on. Maybe it's not based on any animal, but Bertha's impressed that our strength shook her like a tremor from the earth itself. <laughs> now where are those cookies at, Grandma? I'm hungry. Now, let me leave you with one last little bit of advice. Even if you find yourself losing someday, and even if your feelings are crushed, remember to remain as strong as the earth beneath your feet. Thank you. Does that mean we get some mocha cookie crumble? That would be like Bertha's preferred drink at Starbucks for sure. Just because it has like crumble in the name. <laughs> anyway, third Elite Four is going to be Ronald McDonald himself. So let's uh, first go ahead and heal up before we get clowned on. Uh, Benny, once again, at half HP, and uh, two Pokemon dead this time. So, if the trend is to say anything, that means we're going to have three deaths against Flint. But I'm going to hope that it's actually no deaths. Yo! I've been boiling over, waiting to see you again. Any battle with you is guaranteed to get heated. But right now, my soul is burning at 50 million degrees, hotter than the surface of the sun. What? Are you trying to flex or something, bro? Like, I, I don't really get it. I think I just understood why Flint's got such a deep v-neck. Uh, this man's burning up on the inside. 15 million degrees, man. That's pretty hot. You need as much ventilation as you can get in that chest, I guess. <laughs> anyway, he is, of course, a fire-type master and going to be kicking things off with a Drought Ninetales. Fabby the Beast indeed, which means that uh, my Hydro Pump is not going to be as effective because of the sunlight, so... I'm actually going to... Oh god, this is not good. Solar Beam is going to be instant because of the sunny day. Or, well, the drought ability, which means that Washington is probably just dead. Okay, that was pretty close. Not quite dead, thankfully. I was expecting to outspeed because, you know, we have the choice car on Rotom. But, uh, yeah, that was a lot of damage there. Uh, so, because Flint loves to use that... Sunny day to his advantage. We're gonna rain on his parade, or in this case, bring the sandstorm on his sunlight. Ruin his sunny day. I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but basically we're gonna get rid of uh, the sunny day for sandstorm instead. So now, Ninetales, if it did want a solar beam, it would take two turns instead. Uh, unfortunately, we're gonna get put to sleep, which kind of sucks, and I'm pretty sure it's still gonna try to go for the solar beam which will take two turns so I'm just going to go ahead and use my heal powder right heals any status condition so get rid of that sleep real quick don't worry Tyrantar you might think it's some kind of weird herb might be but uh, it's all natural I promise just sprinkle a little oregano in your face and it wakes you right up <laughs> oh my god of course you go for hypnosis again you little son of a <sighs> Isn't that a thing? Like, smelling salts, or... I don't know what they're called, but there's, like, some kind of powder that will literally wake you up if you put it in your face, or... Uh, maybe it's not a powder. I don't know what I'm thinking of, honestly. Finally, Ninetales is gonna go for the Solar Beam. Thankfully, we don't get put to sleep, and we do hit our Stone Edge, so... Goodbye, Fabby the Beast. You were once my favorite. And next up is gonna be the Infernape. Not exactly great for Gojira. We're definitely going to switch on out of there expecting a close combat coming. Uh, Yukina doesn't exactly have anything great against Infernape. Oh, well, actually, we do have Psychic now. I don't think it'll one-shot it, but uh, there we go. And I don't know if we're faster. I'm pretty sure we're not faster than Infernape, actually. So maybe we should just double switch over to Kenny. <laughs> we got the strategies out here, dude. I'm trying to not lose any Pokemon right now. And so far... We haven't lost any, but we've only taken down one of Flint's, so... Oh, Fire Punch. Yeah, that definitely would have killed Yukina. 
Uh, now though, I'm still not sure what to go for because I'm pretty sure Infernape is faster and it might just kill us with the close combat. That's not great. Well, Kenny, you tried your best, buddy, but once again, just like my previous time fighting Infernape, uh, we get outsped, which really sucks. So, uh, Benedict, it's all up to you, homie. You got those air slashes, but you're still not faster, and this dude's got Thunder Punch. Oh my god. Dude, it feels like Flint has an answer to everything. Not just Infernape, but on his team in general. And we no longer have the Sandstorm, so with the Focus Sash, it's actually going to survive. Oh, that really sucks. Like, if we still had the Sandstorm going, yeah, we would have totally finished it off. I wonder if maybe... Rotom can tank a Thunder Punch at like this low of health. I highly doubt it. Uh, I might even just go for Mach Punch or something. I, I don't know. I, oh, what? Okay. Flint's just going for the Forest Store. What the heck, man? I should have just gone for my uh, Air Slash again then. All right. Well, let's see if Washington can tank a close combat. Probably not. So I should have just healed up. Oh, well, there's the Mach Punch. Now we definitely can't survive. Uh, hydro, what, what, uh, close combat, that's the one. Boom, and we do actually live it, hell yeah! Washington, the defense EVs paying off right now, and thanks to those special defense drops, this Hydro Pump will absolutely destroy it! No more Focus Sash for you, buddy! You're done for. But Flint still has four more Pokemon, I'm pretty sure, like, this guy is... Giving us a run for our money so far. Definitely the toughest Elite Four that we've faced. As next up is Arcanine. And we do have the Choice Scarf. I don't know if we can outspeed an Arcanine. I'm pretty sure that we don't, but I want to try anyway. And of course, you've got extreme speed. Why? Why didn't I just heal up again, dude? Like, okay. Well, uh, we still have Gojira. And I don't think Arcanine learns close combat or any kind of fighting moves, so we should be okay. Bringing up the Sandstorm again. I'm um, just gonna go for my Stone Edge and hope for the best, as of course it learns close combat! Dude, I had a feeling that it did! Uh, I don't, like, I literally said it! I'm like, it doesn't learn close combat, there's no way! But, of course it does. So now, we're dead. We're actually in a little bit of trouble right now. If I don't revive any Pokemon, like, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if Bonsai can survive a hit from this thing. Obviously, it's got, like, Glare Blitz or something. If we can survive it, then we Earthquake and probably kill it. But I don't think we can survive it. We'll see. Torterra is pretty tanky, but not tanky enough to live a Flare Blitz. Alright, yeah, we definitely need to revive some Pokemon now. Like, Flint's got us against the ropes, dude. This is not going good at all and also his levels went way up like compared to Aaron who was like level 70s now we're all the way up to 81 so the elite four is definitely ramping up I'm just gonna go ahead and max revive Washington I guess hydro pump is probably our best bet now that uh Arcanine's at half health I don't know if he would have outsped with Benedict actually probably not uh, but with the choice scar I mean Barring the extreme speed, we can definitely outspeed with Rotom, so just uh, keep whittling it down little by little. Oh, it's actually very low now, so even a Volt Switch might be able to finish it. But do I want to go for the Volt Switch is the question. I guess I want to not miss uh, with Hydro Pump, so not going to risk it. There's another close combat. Come on. Any second now. Bolt switch, wrap things up. But now that means that I have to switch to Yukina, which is not great because this, this guy drains fire Pokemon. So Yukina being ice, not uh, my best switch in here. I guess we'll see what he's got up his sleeve. Rapidash comes out and uh, yeah, we uh, are not looking too hot. I mean, might as well go for a Shadow Ball. We are at least faster. I don't know. I mean, we're definitely going to die to Flare Blitz, so I don't know. Oh, wait, what? Oh, we dodged it. I was about to say that maybe the Flare Blitz recoil damage would have just killed it. But, uh, you know, we don't even have to because Yukina just loves us so much. It's going to dodge out and give us another shot at Shadow Ball. The 
Affection is definitely kind of carrying us right now, I would say. Well, not exactly carrying, but okay, this is where our fun ends. Because Shadow Ball is not very effective against Houndoom. And uh, I don't know if I even want to switch over to Rotom. He's at half health. Yeah, I think I might as well just heal up Rotom and hope that we can sweep his last two Pokemon with Hydro Pump. And if not, then I definitely got to try to revive someone else. Because uh, this flamethrower is not... Uh, again? Really? Yukina is absolutely loving it. Or loving us. Surviving with one health. Alright, well, you know what? Since he did that, I'm just going to do what I should have done from the start. Switch on over to Washington again. Can definitely tank a flamethrower. But I don't know about a Dark Pulse. And I don't know if we're going to be faster than this dude either. Thankfully, we don't get burned, and now it's time for the Hydro Pump, but it dodges! No! And you're going Nasty Plot! Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, this is not good, dude. We better not miss this second Hydro Pump, dude. I swear. <gasps> Thank you, Washington. I love you, dude. Oh, if this thing has a Focus Sash, all right. Thank freaking goodness. That was about to end real badly. Wasn't Flint also the toughest last time we fought him? Had to go full throttle. Okay, just make sure not to burn that hair off, bro. As Magmortar will be his last Pokemon. Once again, thanks to the Choice Scarf. I know we outspeed, but will we one-shot it with the Hydro Pump? We do! Let's go! Rotom Washington carrying us right now. Putting the team on his back. Or maybe Yukina did. Surviving with one health, that was pretty crucial. What a burning passion. You're like the sun to our own solar system, Orange. Or my own solar system. Yes, I am. I'm a big old orange in the middle of a uh, sea of fruit-shaped planets. Whew! Burnt right down to cinders. Well, we definitely broke the streak. Instead of three Pokemon dying, it was four. But uh, this is not looking good for Lucian, the final Elite Four. Like, if this trend keeps going, that means we're gonna lose to him, most likely. Uh, shouldn't count us out just yet, though. Let's uh, heal everybody up. In fact, we'll even get Washington all the way to full. Everybody gets topped off today because the final Elite Four is coming up. And I am very, very nervous. This guy trains Psychic types, and I don't necessarily have... Too much to beat him with. I mean, we've got Tyranitar, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully, that's enough. You've timed your arrival perfectly. I'm still quite worked up from the book I just finished. After seeing all you've accomplished thus far, I can certainly tell you this, Orange. You are the protagonist of your own story. And perhaps that just makes me an obstacle standing in the way of your heroic journey. And then again, maybe in this retelling I'll finally trip you up. Wouldn't that be an intriguing plot twist? Why, well, yes, it would be, but I'm not counting on it. Like you said, I'm the main character here. And this ain't Game of Thrones, so... You're just the side hoe. I'm sorry I said that, Lucian. But you know what? I'm not sorry. This guy definitely looks like a playboy. He's gonna kick things off with the Mr. Mime, which is not the best, but, you know, we can always just full switch on out of there and bring someone else. I uh, don't know if I really have anything super effective since Mr. Mime is half fairy type now. Or well, since like Gen 6. It's been a while since it's been fairy. Uh, I think Shadow Ball should still be super effective. So let's go out to Yukina. I tend to forget that, yeah, fairy doesn't like counter ghost or anything. Uh, so I guess steel type would also work. I don't have any steel moves. Either way, the Shadow Ball, yes, it is super effective. So let's do that. And hopefully one-shot it. Or not, because it set up the light screen. We actually don't do nearly as much damage as I thought there. Like, what the heck? The light screen really made a difference there. Like, we did nothing. And now we're gonna have to tank a psychic? Oh, I forgot I also got the cursed body on Yukina now. Hell yeah! I figured that uh, the snow cloak was kind of useless since I don't even have hail. Uh, so I used an ability patch on her as well, and uh, yeah, now we got Cursed Body, which means the Psychic is disabled, so if it somehow had survived or used a full restore, it couldn't go for Psychic anymore. That's a very nice. As next up, we're gonna have the Slowbro. And the light screen is still going, which means that all of Lucian's Pokémon 
will have boosted special defense. So this Shadow Ball, not going to do as much as it should. I mean, even if we didn't have the light screen. Oh my god, again! Yukina with the dodges! Like, what is going on? With our Frost Lash specifically, we don't even need the Slow Cloak. It's just dodging out on everything. I'll take it. I mean, I feel a little bit, like, naughty about it, because it's, it's kind of cheap surviving thanks to the power of love, but, you know, I'm uh, not really in control of whether or not that happens, so I'll take it. This time, though, the Flamethrower is going to hit, and Yukina is not going to survive with the one health, but again, we're going to disable it, dude. Curse body coming in clutch right now. Well, sort of, I mean, I guess if we bring out Bonsai, that's probably our best option actually, because Slowbro is water type, so we can wood hammer that down, and I'm pretty sure that Lucian is going to go for a full restore right now. That Slowbro is looking kind of low, but I guess he doesn't even care. Oh, okay. Maybe if it was still at red HP zone, but the leftovers brought him just a little bit over, so the AI not smart enough to full restore up. Uh, but like I said, with the cursed body, it wouldn't have had flamethrower to counter bonsai anyway so things are working out pretty well so far we've got espion coming up next and i think Woodhammer should do a good amount of damage to it since lucian only got to set up the light screen not reflect so it doesn't have boosted defense and uh, bonsai is adamant nature so that's uh quite a lot of power coming down with that hammer there level 83 now not even close to Benedict. How did Benedict get to 85 already, bro? Like, that's kind of crazy. The true ace of our team. As next up, we're going to have Alakazam. I don't think we can survive a Psychic from this thing, but we do have Gojira, who is Dark type. And if it does indeed go for Psychic, then obviously that's not going to hurt us. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this Alakazam's got to have Focus Blast. I misguessed with the Arcanine not having close combat. This time, I'm going to predict this thing definitely has Focus Blast, but I'm also going to predict that it's going to miss right here, because Focus Blast is the worst. Oh, okay, you have Gasoline Gleam instead. Uh, that's totally fine with me, because, yeah, it didn't do as much damage. Focus Blast would have totally destroyed us, but uh, the Crunch Critical Hit is going to destroy it, which means we're down to Lucian's final Pokemon, I think. Oh no, he's still got two more. And Crunch is still super effective against Bronzong. Back when it was introduced, I think Steel-type resisted Dark, so Dark moves weren't super effective on this thing, but nowadays, definitely is. Uh, but it's got the Earthquake, which means we are gonna lose another Pokemon after all. Two casualties against Lucian. It is what it is. Unfortunately had that Focus Sash, uh, and I'm pretty sure now he's gonna full restore, right? Of course. Now it's actually in the red zone. That's about as low as it can go before just straight up dying. So, uh, Flare Blitz might not one-shot if this thing has Heat Proof as its ability, but I guess it doesn't. Or maybe Blaziken's just that powerful with its Flaming Kicks that it killed it anyway, because Bronzong, I believe, can either have Levitate or Heat Proof, which uh, makes Fire Moves not as strong against it. Uh, but we still one-shot it, so probably had levitate anyway what will lucian's final pokemon be how might i turn this situation how might i turn the tables the tables are turning as Gallade comes out and uh because of our speed boost i'm pretty sure we'll be faster than this thing now so i'm just gonna go straight for the flare blitz and maybe one shot it oh my god blaziken kenny just oh my okay and with the recoil and the life orb. Oh my god, we just barely survived there. That was clutch. Or should I say cluck? Get it? Because he's a chicken. So it goes. You held the whole course of the battle in the palm of your hand. What I really should have held was that joke from all of your ears. I'm sorry. I concede defeat. I use every stratagem at my command, but you persevere through them all. Now, all that remains is for you to write your own epilogue. I love the puns, dude. Not mine. That cluck thing was horrible, but Lucian, with the wordplay here, 
Reminds me a lot of that one girl from Pokemon Black and White who's also an Elite Four. I think her name was Chantal. She also loves reading and trains ghost types. I feel like they're kind of a match made in heaven if Lucian swings that way. I don't know. We might as well get as close to the sun as we can before getting burnt up. And also, uh, I gotta heal my Pokemon. So let's do that real quick. I don't know if this will be the finale of the series because there's a couple of like bonus things I want to do like the battle tower and there's a few legendaries we never caught actually. But with Legends Arceus being right around the corner, I'm probably going to save all that until afterwards. So for now, this is the finale of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Thank you for coming back, Orange. As you know, I am Sinnoh's champ- What? I thought I was Sinnoh's champion. That word carries so much pressure and lies too, apparently. It doesn't happen often, but whenever a trainer comes to challenge me, I know that they carry with them all their hopes and dreams. And so I respect their passion by giving them my all in battle without losing the dignity and poise expected from the champion, of course. Forgive me for airing my petty complaints. I only tell you because you've defeated me before, but I've said too much. The time has come. Please do me the honor of battling my team with all your might. The time has come for a rematch versus the strongest champion of all time. What the heck was that all about though? I, I thought I was the champ. Like that's how it works, right? You take down the champ and then you become it. But I guess not in this game. <laughs> Anyway, Cynthia, as always, will be kicking things off with her Spirit Tomb. I think her team is mainly the same aside from uh, she adds on that Togekiss now, but I don't really remember which Pokemon gets replaced. Uh, either way, we're going to start things off with a Bolt Switch, as we have in like 90% of these battles so far, because don't really have anything super effective against Spirit Tomb, at least not with Washington. In fact, I think Benedict might be the only one with a Dazzling Gleam. Isn't that like Spiritomb's only weakness as far as I can think of? Or maybe it's not weak to steal. I was thinking of Fairy for some reason. But yeah, Fairy type, definitely super effective against it. So let's uh, Dazzling Gleam it up and finish it off. The Expert Belt coming in clutch like the belt of the past that I don't want to talk about anymore. If you know, you know. I'm traumatized by the belt, but uh, her next Pokemon will actually be one I was not expecting, the Porygon Z. So I guess she did switch up her team more than I remembered. Like I know she's got that Togekiss now, but I don't remember her having a Porygon Z with the Hyper Beam. That might just be Betty. Oh my God, the power of friendship. Oh no. Okay, that's like kind of good, but bad. For me personally because i don't want to win just because of friendship or whatever but you know i can't help it dude porygon of course has to recharge so we're just gonna go for another aura sphere and uh yeah i just i feel weird i don't want to say that the only reason i beat cynthia was because of the friendship thing surviving with one health but it happened already we can't go back in time i mean it kind of could, like if I just reset the game right now, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to switch on over to, I uh, probably should have sent in Frostlass, but I'm kind of expecting a Flash Cannon or maybe a Bullet Punch here to quickly finish off the Extreme Speed. Okay, so maybe I should have gone into, I don't know, I think Washington is fine actually. As Lucario's got the close combat, but Washington, not the power of friendship that time, just barely tanking it with his pure defense. This dude has been so good in the Elite Four rematches. I mean, our Rotom. I specifically trained it in physical defense, and it's tanked up so many physical hits. Now hitting that Will-O-Wisp is going to be crucial because uh, Lucario won't do nearly as much damage, and it lowered its own defenses with close combat, so can definitely get the revenge kill with the Hyper Hydro Pump. I was thinking a Hyper Potion, which is not even the one that we use, but... Yeah, Hydro Pump is the word I'm thinking of. Let's see if maybe we can finish it. Oh, wait, I have Choice Scarf. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> that uh, sucks, but I'm expecting another close combat is coming. But now that we've got it, Will-O-Wisp, it won't do nearly as much damage. So let's go into Bonsai and tank it up, being our second highest defense Pokemon. 
Plus, we got the Earthquake to obviously finish off Lucario here. Or just even do any damage to it at all. I don't think we've heard it yet aside from the slight damage from the burning. But thankfully, Cynthia doesn't have that Milotech anymore. That was honestly like the hardest thing to take down on her team the first time around. Aside from Garchomp, obviously. Like she's going to have that still. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, that is going to be the highest leveled Pokemon that a trainer has ever had in any game. Tied with Red's Pikachu at level 88. So a little bit of a spoiler, uh, I didn't look up her exact moveset or anything, but I just wanted to know if in fact like Cynthia is the highest level trainer ever. Oh, what the oh. f***, man? I thought she didn't have Milotic anymore. Well, uh, I know that this thing has the Ice Beam, and I don't think Torterra can tank it, so I don't know why I even went for my Leech Seed. I probably should have just switched, but now it's too late and we are dead oh god the burn too no oh this sucks dude i don't actually have anything really to deal with this milo tick wait what am i saying we've got rotom now we didn't have rotom the first time we fought cynthia this is the real reason we got rotom on the team let's go but of course we miss uh thankfully it doesn't seem to have anything that can hurt us too badly but of course, it gets the burn. Gosh dang it, dude. Just can't catch a break today, it seems. Uh, if we can hit a thunder though, like, come on. I just want to know how much damage we do with it. There it is. Call upon the power of the gods. And oh my god, that almost just one shots it. I don't think the burn from the, well, burn is going to be enough to finish it. First our burn is going to tick though, and then... Milo ticks and nope Milo tick ticks away but it's not enough I am expecting however a full restore out of Cynthia and I think uh the Marvel scale ability actually raises special defense doesn't it so our thunder should actually do more damage this time around not being burned I, I think yeah I mean it did about the same so Maybe not. I don't know. I always forget exactly what Marvel Scale raises. I just know that it's like Guts, but raises some of his stats. I guess it wasn't special, though. Another full restore it is going to get rid of that burn on Washington, because we really don't have any other Pokemon to deal with this Milotic. And the Recover. There it is. Milotic continuing to be the most annoying Pokemon on Cynthia's team. But as long as we can hit, like, one more Thunder... We should be good, and Thunder actually has 10 PP. I thought it only had 5. I guess I'm thinking of, like, Blizzard or something, which is Blizzard. And Fire Blast also 10 PP now. I always thought it was 5. Anyway, we did it. Took down the Raid Boss, which I still feel might be her toughest Pokemon. Or maybe it's now the Togekiss, who's also notorious for being a little bit on the bulky side. I mean, my own Togekiss has been tanking up hits left and right. But this one... Cannot live the power of the washing machine. It's unplugged, unleashed Washington wreaking havoc on Cynthia's team, dude. What? I did not expect that to one shot. And it's time for her final Pokemon. The Garchomp is coming out already, dude. I cannot believe we got here so quickly, but I'm going to keep Washington alive, actually. I'm expecting... Dragon Claw, perhaps? Or it might just Dragon Dance, knowing that we're stuck using Thunder. Ooh, this is tough. I'm gonna switch out into Benny, expecting a Dragon Claw. Uh, if it goes for anything else, then... Uh, I don't know, man. I just hope it's not Dragon Dance. Oh, thank goodness. It was not the Dragon Dance, uh, but it might just go for it now. I'm gonna just try to Dazzling Gleam, as it actually goes for Poison Jab instead. Okay, I'm totally fine with that. Poor Benny is gonna faint, unfortunately, but... We can now get the free switch into Yukina, who also has the Will-O-Wisp. But uh, this Garchomp has that one berry still, doesn't it? Like I said, I didn't look anything up, but I'm pretty sure it still has the same berry that it did the first time around. And it's still faster than us. Oh god, oh, Yukina survives! Just barely hanging on there. There's that Choppel Berry kicking in. Or Yachi Berry, I think is the name of it. And it's actually gonna live! Oh, you've gotta be kidding me, bro! The Yacha Berry's used up! Not yet! I won't let you end things this easily! Go for the Forest Store, Cynthia! I beg of you! Yes, there it is! Forest Store up! You can't get that berry back! You ain't got no recycle, homie! 
which means GG. The Ice Beam from Yukina will absolutely destroy it this time. And we've done it, guys. The Cynthia rematch was somehow easier than the first time around. Is that just me, or I feel like that was a little easier? We went above and beyond my expectations. What a marvelous battle! Oh my god, we've done it! Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl's toughest challenge, maybe even the toughest in all of Pokemon. Was this harder than even the red battle in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver? Drop it in the comments below. What, in your opinion, is the hardest Pokemon battle ever? I could tell from this battle that each of our Pokemon gave every last bit of their strength. Not once did either of our teams hesitate. Thank you for such a refreshing experience. I know now that I can entrust my sticker to you. I've imbued it with everything that made me a champion. Please accept it. Are you freaking serious? Again, the toughest battle ever and all we get is a sticker? Now, on to the lift. Well, I guess it is pretty emblematic of the brilliant diamond and pearl experience. You get a sticker for the hardest Pokemon battle ever. But I'm at least happy because we didn't have that sticker before, like the first time you beat Cynthia. And even the second time, you don't get her sticker. So finally, we can flex on those Pokemon contests. The room ahead is the Hall of Fame. Oh, we know what's going on up there. In fact, I think all of this might be the exact same as uh, the last time we were here. Like the dialogue and everything. So, uh, yeah, I feel like we've pretty much done this. So we're done. Grown into a real champion, even though Cynthia still claims that she's the champion. So who's really the champion here? I gotta know. Maybe we'll find out in the next episode. Oh wait, there is no next episode. The next episode will be Legends Arceus, which I hope you guys are excited for. That'll be starting up on Thursday, maybe? I know the game technically comes out on Friday, but uh, in Australia, the game comes out a little bit earlier and that's when you're allowed to upload. So basically whenever the game is officially released in whatever country it comes out in first, you'll be seeing that episode. So thank you all for watching this playthrough. Let's once again give our congratulations to the Hall of Famers. Washington, definitely the MVP of this Elite Four victory. Betty the Togekiss. Highest level, but I don't know about MVP. Kenny, also not the MVP. Gojira, didn't actually do as much as a... And Bonsai, the OG. I love it, dude. This was such a fun team. All of the Pokemon I used throughout the whole playthrough, like the first time we fought the Elite Four, the Gym Leader rematches, and now this championship bout round two. Thank you to all of our wonderful Pokemon and all of you wonderful people for watching my videos. I hope you'll stay tuned. Wait, I just realized we have 99 hours. What the frick? There's no way I played this game that much.